them come. This is their fate. All right, all right. Burping here. Still ain't in my soundboard. All right, all right. Welcome back to the House of Wolves podcast. I am your host, Deontay, here with some near and dear friends, Jalen and Josh. We got some topics to talk about. Unfortunately, I have not. Still ain't set up that soundboard. One of these days, y'all. One of these days, I'm going to come in here. Um, collab with Dash XP. Man, uh, something. I need something to get the... Up. Get the Good momentum intro. up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I need some I need some um some of that Sonic Adventure 2 uh music or something playing. I don't know. Whatever it is. I need or, something. Uh, where where our uh college friend uh Mr. Yogi at? He he'll do it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Yogi? I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh man. Was he was he uh, was he uh, loud and obnoxious? That's 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 what we're going for here. Loud and extra loud. But um yeah. Uh, nope. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't really, yeah, I still ain't like set that up, but I want to get it set up for sure. Uh, but anywho's, let's uh move into what we wanted to talk about. Not yet, but before we get started, as usual, Josh, Jalen, myself, let's update the people on what we've been doing, what we've been playing. Um, big week this big weekend this time around. <laughs> Uh, uh, but boy, Jalen came up. So, uh, let's start with uh, Jalen and tell us about your weekend uh, in Ohio. Was it was it everything you ever dreamed of? Was it everything you ever dreamed of? That was cool, man. I got to take my boy uh, Deontay out. You know what I'm saying? Not just. Not just. I mean, he's been up there for like. And I guess yeah, pre pandemic. Pre pandemic. So, like, yeah, me and Josh ain't been up there, so I mean what kind of phrase is we, right? <laughs> but no, nah, we uh I definitely had to slide up there one time. I gave a lot of false promises, but like when I slide up there, then I look at that GPS and we're like, man, dang. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but now I had flew up there for a short weekend, uh had some good hospitality, got to see Ohio. I ain't never want to go to Ohio, but Deontay there, so I'm like, I guess we'll go to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, it was it was cool, man. I mean, you got to chop it up with him. Um, I mean, it was like I said, it was short. So I got to meet his little ones and spend a little bit of time with them, and you can just talk about like some grown man stuff, appreciate the house for what it is, and just you know all the changes and stuff. Like I think I get to a point where that stuff interests and stuff like that. But that and um, Spent a lot of time on the Steam Deck to play games that we already <laughs> probably played before. But I mean, it's cool though. We got the bond over that. We'll get a little frustrated too because I mean, who who don't love computers, right? So yeah, that, that it was um an interesting trying conundrum trying to get that fixed. But um yeah, no, nah, it was um enjoyable. We didn't really play nothing. We was playing a little bit of Overwatch the first night. Um, uh, catching bodies. How many burns I was hopping to? <laughs> Man. We, ain't, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we went to one and uh, let me take off the all eyes on me. That was like, yeah. Tupac. Yeah, I was like, geez, look right. I'm like, damn, one belong in here. Nah, I said, right, that's a rebot. That's a rebot. He's like, I said, oh, well, we walked up in that wall. We felt the intense, intense stare now. He said, very <laughs> 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 When uh, Kenpachi raises his eye patch and that spiritual pressure went crazy. I'm like, man, somebody raised their eye patch and this spiritual pressure for dummy. Yeah. I'm like, man, let's just leave, bro. I don't think he's supposed to be in this whole society. <laughs> yeah, it was a little uh it was a little funny definitely going bar hopping. I ain't never really um you know, I don't do that because at this point, if I'm not with something or doing something with the work is with the kids or whatever, so Ohio don't really explore like that. I don't really care to either. Uh, but I stick to Cleveland and you know stick to Akron uh, for sure, for sure. And um, uh, found out we, we we just we just messed around and found out. That's all. But uh, we we made it out. We had some, um, you know, it wasn't nothing that nothing that that felt like we were we, we were being attacked or anything. It just just was very awkward and uh, we felt that and. 
Uh, so we 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 had uh we had to skip skip Skedaddle up out of there for real for real. So. I'm downtown, no, I'm just boy. <laughs> not, I'm not just boy. Not the side down. Uh, 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 I would hope not. But you know. Yeah, um, fish out of water, too black. Man, obviously. You understand what we you, you understand what we're getting at here. It's Ohio. I live in the it's suburb Ohio. area. You get the you get the drift. But um they but yeah. Yeah. Jalen Jalen almost got me. I was like, bro, we should go here. He said, man, that's far. I said, I know, but you know, we should go here. <laughs> He, he, he said, wanted, to, uh, he wanted to drive. He wanted to drive 40 minutes to go to a bar. I'm like, man, I don't know about that, bro. Like, I don't think that's the safest thing. So he like, wanted to go somewhere that, that was 10 minutes away. I said, I don't know, man. <laughs> I said, you might want to travel to that. You might want to travel 40. He's like, I don't know, man. So, so uh, we got what we got, but uh, ended up sliding somewhere. We just had chill. So it was fine still, but um yeah that, that, that was it was still a fun weekend um but yeah we only played like only played like a few things you know i mean i was um experimenting on my steam deck but outside of that we were chilling but what about you, you josh oh we all sorry. did some tinkering on our steam decks this weekend um, yes but uh, no i was gonna say you you still y'all might remember it but you're gonna get some stairs when you come visit japan Jalen. <laughs> but yeah, bro, they gonna, they at least I feel like in the way. bars they they be more friendly. Uh, <laughs> they gonna ask if I'm from uh, Atlanta. 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 Oh, Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Wait, it's nah. not black sanctum. He said Africa. I said no, nah, man. <laughs> he said USA. Ah, uh, Atlanta. <laughs> he said that's where the black people be at. I said no, nah, man. Black, <laughs> black sanctum. <laughs> that drug had me crying, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they. And I, I like I said, it wasn't like it was no harm or anything like that done or anything. But you just know, some places, uh, yeah. I mean, you just don't feel comfortable. Not that they were making you uncomfortable. Technically, they weren't trying to, but the stare down plus the uh, the type of you know surrounding and music, and then also the people around you. That doesn't that doesn't feel too welcoming. So you know you just bounce up out of there. But when nobody was nobody was hurt, so we good. You know, nobody was mean or being uh some or being mean to us or doing anything to us. It was just you know that type of feeling. So we just scat skedaddled. But um, no harm, no foul. Learned our lesson, but we still had a good time. Um, but anything. I know outside of Overwatch, yeah, I ain't really been playing much. Um, I've been, tr- this week. yeah, I ain't really played much. I was trying to play a little bit of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Got a little, oh, it, you played I, it? I got a little uninterested, but yeah, I mean, I'm playing it now. I'm just not. Well, I didn't. go ahead. I guess I actually a bit about that because uh, the game I played this week was another strategy game, uh, XCOM. Oh, we okay. know um, what you seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I had got a bunch of games I have forever that I'm trying to actually work through. Uh, but what what part was you, I guess, uninterested about Fire Emblem? Were you, were you do, like in a mission? I was just talking just... to people. I was kind of over it. I was like, bro, I I can't figure out the mechanics of the game system because I keep talking to people. So I was just like, bro. I, I mean, first off, I'm not the greatest. I played it a little bit, then turned it off for a long time. Went back to it. And it's like, okay, I'm trying to remember all the things again, but they only like small little fights that aren't hard. So when it comes to that stuff, I'm just like tapping the button and not really strategizing right now. So Mm -hmm. I'm getting fed the story when I really want to learn more about how the game plays to even see if I'm interested in continuing on. So I'm not more so the game ain't the problem. It's more about their pacing and how they introduce characters alongside gameplay it just feels like it's a little off balance right now um and hopefully over time it begins to become more i know as you stated i know and i'm going in thinking like okay if this is already this right now how's it going to be when you really start to heavy on the conversation i'm like bro i don't think i want to be interested in this but i'm gonna keep going that game game, uh, 
ever since Awakening, which was the one on the DS, they both focused a lot more on the social stuff because people like the characters and want to, you know, spend time with them and stuff like that. Marry them, um, you know, how they go. <laughs> yeah, because Awakening, uh, this game doesn't do it. Well, I guess the the big thing is like, yeah, you, you can marry your characters and, and stuff like that. But the, the gameplay mechanic based off that is that they get married and they will have a kid later and that kid is going to get all the best skills from both parents and so that's oh. how you can build the like, op characters because this character can move twice in one turn and this character can heal every time they kill somebody and then they have a kid together now this character can move twice and heal every time they kill somebody so like it's it's some strategy in that but um all the games kind of have that sort of mechanic, but it, it's done differently. And this in Three Houses is not like getting married, but mm -hmm. it's characters. There's gonna be a time skip, and characters are gonna they're gonna change. Um, and you you're supposed to like socialize with them now, so that when it is the time skip, you have the best version of them after the time skip. But the problem with it is that this game literally has like what forty characters because. Um, I, I guess you might already know it, but it's three factions, and you're gonna pick a faction to to stay with. Like mm -hmm. these gonna be your students. Like uh, I forget their names, but like the red the red group, you pick these as your students, right? And then after the time skip, you have to fight against the other students. So you're meeting all the characters now because later either they're gonna be on your team or you're gonna be trying to kill them, and like that. That part is interesting because you you spend so much time with these students and now you got to kill them, but oh. uh, it does pacing wise is no easy way to it's no good way to do that. Um, I think. Well, I mean, they probably could have done it better, but yeah, right now they just throw all thirty students at you and you just got to go meet them all. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's kind of one of my like downsides of it. But like I said, I'm gonna keep going and uh, hopefully I can get to enjoy it. Uh, as time goes on, um, but you know, are you with um, permadeath? I think so. Yes, I, I set it up as permadeath because I want to try it out. But now I'm starting and moving forward on that save. Uh, I don't think I switched it, so yeah, that's probably the one I'm playing on. And um, I don't think you can change it, right? You, it's like once you set start, it's like it's locked in, correct? Uh, I don't know. They might let you change it. Uh, I don't think they let you like flip flop back and forth, but they might let you mm -hmm. turn it off. I like it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. It used to be mandatory, but now they made it optional. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, that's kind of what. Um, that's kind of, I guess, my. I don't know. My thoughts on uh, that. Thoughts on Fire Emblem. But other than that. I've still been trying to, you know, eat away oh. a little bit at Sonic Frontiers, and I've played Teeny Tina's Wonderland, um, which uh, obviously I enjoy it. I just suck that it's on the Epic Store because it doesn't run well through Steam um, play or like Steam remote play. So oh, I Steam. literally have to watch it play it on my computer, and I hate that. So I don't know if I'm going to beat it, to be honest with you. I just not because I, I can't play it. I can't sit here and play a game. I don't know why. I just can't do it. Um, I don't like it. So probably not going to be it, but that's the one that had all the DLC. And I was like, I'm not mm -hmm. going to buy it again on Xbox just so I can play it how I want to play it. So now mm -hmm. I just have to muster up the, which is so weird, muster up the ability to play a game in a different way than I'm normally used to, which is just playing on the PC. So Yeah. That has been my experience this week because I was trying to play X um, Two on my Steam Deck, and um, I played it uh, like it was free on PlayStation Plus like a couple years ago, and I played a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And it's the main thing is a strategy game like Fire Emblem, but it's about aliens invading the Earth, um, yep. and it's difficult. And you know it's permadeath, and as you keep going through missions, like you can't. Like if you, but if you get a game over and fire them, like you fail your mission and it's then it's a game over and you restart, um, your last save. But in XCOM, like literally, you can send five people out on a the mission, they all die, the mission fail, 
the game continues because there's a like overall like game timer where like you can keep trying and keep recruiting people into like trying to beat the game before the, the time reads or whatever. But I was struggling with it to get it to run on the Steam Deck because I have it on Steam now with all the DLC. Um, so one, I booted up on the Steam Deck and you can install like character mods and stuff like that on Steam because it's built into the game. So if you want Star Wars characters, you just put them in the game. Right. Uh, it works on Steam, but you launch it on the Steam Deck and it doesn't work. Hmm. And so yeah, I was trying to figure out why. And it's like their third party launcher, like just doesn't load this stuff correctly even though it's like built into steam and like steam has the mods like literally built into the steam interface right. it just doesn't work through their launcher when you launch it so i spent a bunch of time trying to fix that uh finally figured out how to get to no actually i didn't figure out how to get it to work until much later uh so i had to remote play it and i was trying to remote play uh, with the game and normally that works well on steam Except the controls didn't work. <laughs> so I got the <laughs> the game shows up on the screen. I can play it on my computer. Everything works right. I plug in the controller and it works right. Play it on the Steam Deck. No controls. So I spent like literally a whole day trying to fix that. And it's like, it's multiple issues. Like it turns out it wasn't the Steam Deck fault. It's the game itself. Just it has controller support. But since the Steam Deck, like, you know, use the trackpad and it acts like a mouse um when you use the mouse the game thinks you're using mouse in a keyboard and then it turns on the mouse and keyboard mode uh but when you're playing the game you can't switch to controller mm-hmm. uh, my bad i don't know if you explain if you're on the main menu of the game mm-hmm. you got to go to the options and pick controller or keyboard but if you're actually playing the game you can't switch it without going back to main menu so the problem was that I would try to remote play it and I'm playing the game, but it won't let me switch the controls. Anyways, I spent a whole bunch of time trying to fix all that, end up playing through the whole game um, through remote play. Uh, you know, just because I can, you know, play it in my bedroom at any time. And I mean, it worked well. I enjoyed the game, it was very fun. Uh, and then when I started the DLC, I ended up finding an article about how to, like, not un- uninstall the launcher because uh, mm-hmm. it's what who's who's this company um 2k yeah, yeah 2K. Uninstall the 2k launcher so that you can just skip right to the game and then now i can play it normally with no problems on the steam deck um so like Jalen was saying it's a bunch of tinkering when it comes to pc games and even more tinkering when it comes to the steam deck i think the steam that makes it a lot easier but it's still like if you just want to boot up your favorite game, there's a good chance that it might not just work. So you mm. always got to research, research that stuff. Yeah. And I think that's where we was kind of running into an issue with, um, he was trying to play on like a modded version of Pokemon. And, um, it was just kind of, um, just too much. It was too much when it come to controls and it was always remap it and like mess it up. And we was trying to go through retro arc and it was just terrible. But then we would try to go through something else. If Jalen wanted to just play the game normally, it would be fine, but he doesn't, he want to play it with like a fast forward button. He wants to use it where he has save states and load states map to buttons. And it just caused the issue. So not saying that we couldn't play the game. I'm saying that we couldn't play it the way we wanted to, which kind of is the whole point. So, Anyways. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a <clears throat> it's a computer, and I think that, like I had stated before on a another podcast, is like this thing is a computer, but yet it's like a game, and you don't have like a mouse and keyboard like natively. You have to like pull up your keyboard, but the keyboard don't always come up, um, depending on like what you're doing and stuff like that. So if I'm on my regular computer, I can easily cut the game on. Got a fast forward button. And all this type of stuff. And I ain't asking for much. I ain't trying to be like, you know, um, save state, low state, switch my save state, switch my low states when I'm in the middle of playing it, rewind, screenshot. I'm not trying to do it. I just literally want to have a regular control and three extra buttons, a fast forward button, a save state, and a low state. And when the Steam Deck try to register, like, what you doing and stuff like that, it's like, well, are you in desktop mode or are you in, or are you playing it with a keyboard or are you playing it with the actual gamepad controls? Because 
I kind of I feel like you playing with the keyboard right now, even though you're hitting the X button on a gamepad, and I'm gonna do what the keyboard is supposed to do, how the X button is mapped on the keyboard. So, you know, it's just like that weird stuff yeah. or whatever. Um, so it's just yeah. kind of caused a little bit of confusion. Yeah. So I mean, if you're, um, if you, I mean, obviously the Steam Deck is a really phenomenal type of machinery anyway in itself, but it is sometimes a little cumbersome when you're trying to get stuff to work exactly how you want it, um, especially when it comes to launching games and running games through that proton layer um it's just kind of difficult and like i said i'm i'm not doing things that you normally should be doing like i'm trying to run an epic game launcher game through steam steam so i can do remote play because epic doesn't offer anything like that which um is unfortunate so that is type of situations where it's like, oh, okay, this is this is like daunting and, and tiring. So you don't end up playing games. You're more so busy trying to work on games. And that's my whole problem with PC gaming in itself. I'm not. I, I am doing too much tinkering than rather than playing. So, um, and it kind of messes. It kind of messes with me when I play games on the PC. I just be like, bro. I don't I don't want to deal with half the stuff that I got to deal with. And it's not even that they haven't become easier. It's just that I know in the back of my mind that something could go wrong. And it's not just, you know, <clears throat> it's not just like um, it's like plug and play as as one may want it to be. Um, you can yeah. you can manipulate and make it that way sometimes. But really, it's still a tinker in there, a tinker in here. I got to make sure my options are right. Um, I did a whole bunch of optimizing for Teen Tiny's Wonderland, but I could have just bought it on the Xbox and had no issues running at a lower quality on my Series S and rolling at a higher quality on my X. And I could have had fun. I could have probably be halfway through the game, but I was too busy tinkering because I was able to get it for free through Epic Store and do um, now I wanted to play that copy for free when it'd probably be way more convenient and user friendly if I just bought it on my console. So that's the difference for me. Also, obviously, people are a lot much smarter and more dedicated to that type of stuff than I am. Um, but it's just not me and never has been. And that's probably why I probably won't finish Teen Titans Wonderland on there. And I may end up down the line when it's 15 bucks or 25 for the chaotic edition paying for it there to breathe through it on the xbox because then i will be able to enjoy it in the capacity that i wanted to enjoy it and um same thing goes for anything else i was like i'm not gonna deal with the epic store i prefer steam um, epic try to throw money at you and buy your loyalty and doesn't it hasn't worked and never will work because the features aren't there so until they get the features that you want Nobody really wants to use the Epic Store, Game Store. And um, no matter how many free games you give us, I don't want to use it. Um, I think it's cumbersome and I think it's lackluster. So Steam is always where I'm going to go for my games if I'm buying anything on a PC. But that is solely due to the Steam Deck because now we're running games that I enjoy on the Steam Deck's OS. And the Steam Deck's OS makes me feel comfortable purchasing versus before where I would have to use my desktop PC that I don't enjoy playing on. So there's a lot of lot of lot of lot of stuff like that that kind of comes into play for me, especially when it comes to um, PCs. But um, we did some tinkering. We figured some stuff out. Glad we uh, conquered a little bit. But um, we know what it is, and I, I I definitely know why I choose to to um, avoid that. But you, know, you need to stop giving two K all your money. Yeah, I suppose. You gotta uh, just just play it on the Epic Store. <laughs> no nah, man, you know, I, you I, I gave them seventy four fifty eight, and then I took it back because they had seventy four. <laughs> I bought your boy for the, for that game, and I was like, nah. And then they and then Epic got it, and um, I was able to have like I had like a forty dollar credit. I just used that, and um, the rest is history. But still don't want to do it. But yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it is. Yeah, I mean, but why? Um, I know you say you don't like playing on your PC, but is it just the location that it's set up, or? Um, no, because I sit know. here and play my Xbox games and my PS5 games. I don't know what it is, to be honest. Maybe I don't like clicking buttons on there, and I don't like feeling 
Like I can't manipulate my other screens while I'm playing a game because if it's in window mode, something gonna mess up and it's gonna turn, box it out. Or if I gotta press the little escape key, then start messing with something. But then my controls that I'm trying to play the game on don't work, so I can't continue to play while I'm doing something else. And sometimes I'm literally always multitasking. Like I can't just not do something else sometimes. And that's how I play games sometimes, where I'm like doing something on my computer or making something run in the background. And if my PC is running a game, it bogs stuff down. Not only that, but it also locks me into that screen and I don't like it. Yeah. So um, I prefer to not run games on it. I prefer to just run games through my monitors on my um, count through my consoles and pl do other things while that is running. So it's really that, honestly, it's not the anything else. Um, so, yeah, I understand because it even like when games are window they all act differently like some yeah. some games like i want to have it window and be able to go out and do other stuff but it'll like pause the game or mm -hmm. stop all the sound from coming out of the game even though i don't want it to do that so yeah that is annoying for me i just try to uh since i have like multiple monitors maybe i'll have like my overwatch running on my pc and on another monitor i have something else like i have my steam deck plugged into it and I'm browsing the internet that way but yeah I, th I think that's the the biggest problem for me for playing on my pc but also i spent so much money on it that i might as well use it so absolutely. i try to force myself to play on it <laughs> yeah absolutely not that makes total sense if i had a setup like yours i probably would too my setup is a little older i use it for other things to be productive on and i don't so I don't find a need to like play games on it um, to make that mm -hmm. make me feel like I, my purchase is validated because I use this for so much other stuff that it already feels validated. So um, I get what you're saying, though, too. Uh, but yeah, OK, well, that was a long intro technically, but we really was talking about the Steam Deck. So I'm just I'm gonna call that the Steam Deck part of the show. Steam Deck troubleshooting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. I guess um, what are some of the I think I think the one thing that we wanted to talk about first for sure was um, the last of us. The last of us finally got a the last of us finally came out this recently. The um, TV show, at least TV show came out and um, too much people's not surprised. I suppose they stay stick to the material. They stuck close to the source material. And um, people are praising it for it. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed that story. Um, I already played that story. So I don't know how I feel about watching that story play out again with no difference. Um, I thought that the I thought that the materials, the, 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 the storyline, the, the, the soundtrack or the, the OST, I thought all of that stuff was going to hold up and it does transfer it to a big screen because that's what it was. Last of Us was basically just a movie. So um, I never had any doubt in my mind that that was going to be the case. Maybe they try to expand a little bit, but they don't really go out of the they don't go out that box, which is it's good to see. And then it's sometimes like, uh, well, I know what's going to happen next. And oh, Instead of a gas station blowing up, a plane crashed. Oh, well, I know what's going to happen next to kind of cause this situation to keep going and the momentum to move forward. It's whether or not now, literally, that's the only thing that you got to look forward to is how the actors portray it, um, which they're probably going to stick close to the source material because, again, the source material did a great job of showcasing how you want to portray these scenes. And uh, Pedro... Uh, is doing a great job. I forget the old girl name. She doing a good job. Tess did a good job. Um, first episode at least. So I don't really have anything that um I per se am running back to weekly to be like, oh shoot. But it's something that me and my wife love, so we're probably gonna watch it all the way through. But it's not like oh I need to know what's gonna happen next because I already know what's gonna happen next. Um, and that's the conundrum there. It's like, oh, it's going to be so close to it. People are going to love it for it. But the people that haven't seen it are probably going to love it for it even more for that because you get to experience basically that video game without actually having to play it. But um, 
I guess it leaves a little bit to be desired, but I don't want to hate on it because um, we've seen where people adapt and change stuff and it, which is not great. So, hmm. I, I can say this. I'm more interested in The Witcher than I am in this show simply because of there's a difference, or at least the source material is mm -hmm. a lot, lot more expansive that mm -hmm. I can actually look forward to something that I don't know. Um, Last of Us is very straightforward, linear, and I understand the plot very well. I understand the, the nooks and crannies, the, the things the side characters did, the stuff that we didn't see offhand, maybe exploring that. Um, still, we'll always get to the end result. At least in The Witcher, that world is a lot more expansive and they can draw from a lot more things. And it doesn't have to feel as if I'm playing through the game again. So that's the difference there, um, at least for me. I'm not saying that that wasn't the smartest move. I'm not saying that that's the best move. I'm not saying that I know what the best move is. I'm saying that for me, that that provides a lack of interest in the show due to the fact that I know what's going to happen. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess then that brings up the question, who are these adaptations for? Because I would bring up like the Halo TV show, for example, where it's like people who are already fans of Halo were not happy with the changes, so they're not going to watch it. And then people who do watch the show who are, who are not existing fans of Halo are getting something that's not Halo. So it's not like if you go read the book, you get something similar or you go play the game, you get something similar. So with this, at least, I even though I'm not personally interested in The Last of Us, I think the story is good enough that normal people can enjoy it, but it's sticking so close to the original that it, how put it, it, the franchise is what is being uh, built out here, where you're getting a cohesive narrative and franchise that people can follow. So if they want to play the game or they you all know, whatever, it, it's the same it feels like it's made by the same people whereas like a lot of stuff when they have different adaptations like Velma <laughs> it, not that different adaptations can be bad but it doesn't feel like it's a part of the same stuff so it, it's this little side thing that you can forget about then it's my it seems like you know is it even worth it to like make it I think it's worth it to make it because everyone doesn't play video games and that movie in itself was award winning in so many different ways. I think there's a plenty of adaption that can happen where they follow the source material and still be good. God of War being one of them. Um, there is uh, a st that there is that is there. Halo didn't really have a big story, in my opinion, and I felt like a lot of people just blew it up as if they just had this complete, beautiful, smart story. And, and it's not true. Um, I thought it was very lackluster and I thought that when I played through Halo 2, I didn't think it got too great. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the best part of the, I don't, I definitely don't want to see him as Master Chief and I don't want him to take his helmet off, but I also want to connect with the character more. So maybe his, his, his feats and his, his understanding and, and like that, that proceeds him in a, such a strong way that it's like core to the show because that is what we kind of everybody loved about master chief is the crazy stuff he would do and like the big like how he would just go in and yeah he was the action hero yeah i don't, I don't care about his personality because he's nah. a robot basically and yeah it, i think it's fine to have a show like that because that's the same thing that I, I i would say like having him take off his helmet and do all the other stuff doesn't even make sense after the Mandalorian show that you don't have to do that. He's in 18 episodes and he's taking his helmet off in two. Yeah. Mandalorian was much uh, better than that show. So I'm just like, yeah, th there's, there's, there's a ways to do something to make it really good. And, it, um, for, for me, this adaption here simply is for people that have never played the game and are interested in that post apocalyptic world. Like most people are, this is like, this could literally be like another, um, technically a walking dead, but, um, which much more meaning to me because it's like, I already understood it. I love the story anyway. Um, so it's not like I don't have a connection to it. So but, not only will they get the people that already played it to play because we have a connection to it, but it's going to have the people that did not play it, bring in, bring in those people too. 
but I think but it's truly the made. Dead, I think is a a good example of that because I I know you said that this is for people who didn't play the game, mm-hmm. and I think that it's fine. Like you don't have to play the game, but like I was saying with the the overall franchise stuff, Walking Dead at least in the beginning did a good job of keeping everything in the same world. Whereas mm-hmm. like you play the Walking Dead Telltale game. It's the same, similar characters uh, in both stories. They, mm-hmm. kinda, they do, like, it, the stories don't contradict each other and stuff like right. that. Because um, it seems like we want this to still fit in our same world. So it's like, I know that The Last of Us, at least, um, this this remake or whatever for TV doesn't stray for anything, stray from the original story. But I think that this is probably... At least for me, I think this is the the correct option. The, how to put it? Look, how, think about season two, for example. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't like, or a lot of people had issue with uh, the story direction in Last of Us Part 2. And it's like, if they go into season two of the TV show and they change anything about um, that story, then it kind of sucks because it's like you you made this original story in the game and you're not sticking to it. So that means they're, they probably will stick with the same story. And I think that's better all overall better for the last of us as a brand to keep these two things in line and not do anything wildly different. Other no, than I, like I agree. Not follow Ellie and Joe, just like brand new characters. That would be the other right thing to do, but you know, right. If they don't want to, add season two as in like they don't want to pr- provide us with the ending of Ellie's and, and that that's okay because people have the game that they can play to understand how their journey end and if they wanted to continue moving forward with different characters and have a unique story then that's fine with me as well because I don't have any soul attachment to them and the last of us world can be rebuilt uh continuing only on with Ellie or with uh, the characters that they presented in Last of Us Part Two, so there's ways for this to be done correctly, and there's ways for it to. Cause I can see it going. I just don't know what is going to be the next situation, or what is going to be um, the next season. Because obviously, there's going to be a season two. Um, this is already super popular. People are talking about it like crazy. They love it, and people are enjoying what they have shown in the part one and season episode one. Uh, I don't expect that to be any different. They're gonna they're gonna cover the DLC and, and Left Behind. Um, I have to believe in the next episode. So there's not really much to say that you know would cause people to kind of feel animosity or not want it to happen because right now they're following the jo- the story that they loved. So there's nobody in the camp of oh we hate it. Don't continue on with her. Because right now they're enjoying the story that was always presented to us and we fell in love with with those characters. Once it gets to the point where we have seen that story, we have seen him make that decision in the end, and we have seen what that impacted and how that impacts the world, what is next is will they pivot and move to a different uh, group of people or will they continue on with the story that a lot of people, so much controversy behind and so much issues behind like that you your 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 season is already decided for you. I don't think they want that. They know which one we loved and they know which one to probably use. I don't think the decision would be to let's also add in the one they hated um or was very devi- divisive. I don't think that's how they want to do it. So um I don't agree with them changing anything because that is their that is their that is what they chose to present and not not for nothing. It wasn't a terrible story. It was just so many decisions that were made were so strong that it rubbed people the wrong way. It was just so strong. It was like really strong and you doing this, this is going to happen. It was so strong. Like you, you just I don't. It, I think it will be received differently, though, in the TV show. Because, Absolutely, because like, you don't have to play with every her. Every week. Yeah, because like every week in The Walking Dead, they would just do some wild, crazy stuff. And it's like, even like the characters that you like would do stuff that's kind of like out of character or stuff that you didn't agree with. But yeah. that that made you want to come back next week to see what happened. And I think in a TV show, it'll be more acceptable. Whereas like in a game, you know, you want to play as your favorite character. You're here for Joel. 
and a little bit of an Ellie, and then they flip all that around, and you're not even playing as either of them for a good portion of the game. So, yeah. Absolutely. But, um, Watching them talk and do, go through their scenarios would be more intriguing than actually playing through it. But at the same time, that time frame, that change up, and that how, how it was presented, that game... The decisiveness of that game, season episode one, we would be we would be seeing the impact of that choice that they made, right? Mm-hmm. And then that sets the tone for the rest of the season. Do people keep coming back because they they fall in love? I'm pretty they sure like most Ellie people will fall in love with Joel by by the end of the season. Yeah, and then to come back season one, episode one, to come to that decisive moment, it's still gonna rub people the wrong way. Because that is how they that's how strong their 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 decision making was. Like that is their strong decision making. So not saying that it wasn't bound to happen, just that fast is really what was gonna cause a lot of people to be rift get rift by it. It's like the it's like it's like mm-hmm. the freaking um the red wedding or something. But in like on steroids. So it's I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't think it would be the best um watch season. <laughs> But it'd definitely still be an intriguing one because I want to see how they portray it. If they portray it any differently, if they make any different decisions, but we know it's going to happen and it's probably going to happen in episode one or two because that is what else, that's what leads up to everything else because you cannot have that not happen fast soon to get to those stuff that we happen in the plot before, after. So um, it'd just be an interesting one. uh... TV communities are weird where it's like they'll people watch a bad TV show or they'll watch a bad movie or it's like yeah. because it's funny or they just want to see what happened and it's less than of an investment than like a game. But nobody's gonna play a you know a bad thirty hour game. Um, Absolutely not. But yeah. part of the reason like I bring it up is because Velma, I think, you know, a lot of people have been watching it and it hasn't been getting good reviews, but a lot of people have watched it because their friends have talked about it. They saw reviews about it. They wanted to see it themselves. And that, you know, like brings up the watch count and it, its popularity. But it, it's iffy with like TV shows because like it's very popular, but nobody likes it. But they still keep making it kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what kind of was what's what my understanding of Velma is right now. I'm not saying that it's a bad show. I'm saying that it shouldn't be called Velma and they shouldn't have probably use those characters. I think they're just butchering her doing right now. But um that's just my opinion. I only watched um what, two episodes, two episodes. So mm-hmm. I still need to take that time to really watch through the whole thing, but I can tell from right now that it is not my type of generational um pr- progression that I want to see in a Scooby Doo show. Um it is very much so big mouthish. I don't like that show. Um I don't care for that show that much because it's like outlandish and it tries really hard to be funny and it's not landing most of the time. Um, But I will give it a shot and I will continue to watch it. But um, those are not my club. You know, that's that's not my type of television. And for show, for show, when I look at Scooby-Doo and I look at all the stuff that I used to watch and how I used to see it and what I thought of these characters, this for show ain't it. So, um, I just, I just, I just can't uh, get past it. So, do you think that Scooby Doo as IP was a bad pick, or they just, just the, the cast they should have done differently? Like, I saw a lot of people say like it should have just been like a different group, uh, of people, kind of like, you know, separate from the Scooby Gang, like just a different group of teens that also are doing mysteries, and every now and then they'll see like. A, uh, Scooby or somebody, but it's not them that's the main story. Yeah, they could have parried it off of being in that world and being like the B team. That would have been awesome because then I could get behind the characters in a different way. They can solve mysteries, but they're a bunch of misfits that really don't really work too well together. I was introduced as the Scooby Doo mystery machine, and them really working work to take down people. And I was always introduced to them as actually a good detective team. The album might hold the hold the the you know the 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 leader type of position outside of Fred, but Fred really wasn't, in my opinion, the smartest of the bunch. He was really Velma, um, and then so I enjoyed them in that cloth. To see them in this cloth now is kind of like, 
yeah, y'all shouldn't have named this film. Y'all shouldn't have named this person. Y'all shouldn't have gave this iconic character to them to kind of write over and cause this, like, I don't know. I'm really tired of seeing shows be rewritten to pre be presented to Gen Z. Um, it's quite obnoxious in the type of storytelling they, and that they, they chose to do. Yeah. Is it because it's just a, um, how to put it, like different portrayals and personalities of the characters, or is it because it's like actually adult, more adult themed? Um, both. Honestly, I don't think I would love to have watched this with to showcase the differences. Like it's such a big difference that I can't even go back and show someone the source material and say, look at how, like how they tried to change it and manipulate it and make it look, make it almost similar, but not as similar. Like this is a totally different type of situation. Fred cut off somebody's foot in the first episode um, blood everywhere and then it's the uh, and then it's the whole fact on how they want to present the characters in this new day and age um obviously you know scooby we everybody knew shaggy was a piehead or at least he was very much so in that in that in that cloth always hungry blah blah blah, blah. but they never kind of showcased it in that way they just kind of had him as a character at as a caricature of what that would look like without the the without the drugs i'm pretty sure this this one is going to show full-on drugs is going to show everything that you kind of i don't know as a young kid you probably wouldn't have understood about it but i there's no way possible for my kids to play like i'm not finna watch them watch no big mouth when i feel like to watch this and i'm not even <laughs> trying to have them I'm not trying to say that they need to make another Scooby-Doo show for kids because they kind of already still make Scooby-Doo. Um, I just think that this portrayal of this type of iconic character, to call it Velma, um, is really like just off-putting. Um, and did you, uh, yeah, did you I, like I don't know. Really yeah, I really like Hardaway Quinn. But that was yeah. another one of those shows that kind of at least that show is an understanding of what um, has an understanding of what truly Harley Quinn is. Mm -hmm. I don't think Velma knows. I don't think the show cared so people that really understood or even cared to understand what Velma either meant to people before. Like Harley Quinn was always crazy. She was like an anti-hero, and that's what they mm -hmm. they fell into. She was always doing bad stuff, but sometimes you would see glimpses of like a person that would actually, you know, make sense or at least try to save someone in a different type of way. Maybe it's not just murder, murder, kill, kill. And they kind of embraced it a little bit more and they provided a cast of characters surrounding her to kind of keep her on that set path, even when she doesn't want to. So that makes it interesting and fun to watch to see what she's going to do next. But it also provides someone to something, a person to be rooting for. Velma is, um, at least, I, like I said, I haven't finished the show because I can't, I don't want to charge it too harshly. I'm only saying two episodes. But what I can say is a lot of things have already occurred that would tell me otherwise that this is not a one, a redemption story. This is not a story about someone dealing with um past trauma this is not someone than even about it's not even, even about like i feel like solving mysteries is so much on the back burner that the character itself is so different it's not even about being yeah. velma it's just about being a person in this weird world where you sometimes have a mystery to solve so it could have been like a character juror of um just any other show, dude. I I just don't think it should have been Velma. So, yeah, yeah I think that with um, like the same thing I was saying with like the um, the Last of Us is like it it's okay to change the stuff, um, but I think what the creators of this wanted to do is take a I don't want to say meme, oh. but like take a i a single idea about each character and like expand on it and like like you said Velma. 
uh, was always a smart one. She was more reserved, but she's a, a team player and like, you know, be courageous when she need to and stuff like that. But they they single on one detail and expand on that, but it ended up becoming like a different character. Like specifically with Shaggy, the biggest thing about him, because like he never did drugs, like you never see him do drugs in the show. Um, mm-hmm. So, but his biggest thing, he loved food, eating, but he's also like literal best friends with Scooby. And mm-hmm. that's his whole personality. And and of course, like they're like cowards and run away. Um, and just taking the the drug aspect or like the hippie aspect and making that his whole personality kind of sucks because it it takes out i feel like it leaves that other stuff on the back burner which you know it's not the same character at that point um so yeah. i yeah i mean i i personally like you said i, I enjoy harley quinn because it like it kept the same character it still felt like harley even though the show was adult and there's a lot of blood and like um break cutting off limbs and stuff like that it was still it felt like in line with what you would expect from this character and from what you expect from Joker. Other characters they they played around with and made fun of, like Batman is like um what they do to him. He like uh simping for um Catwoman and mm-hmm. he, he like sucks at dating, but he's still Batman and, and yeah. stuff like that. Um and like that's that stuff is fine. Um I, I don't know. Ultimately I, I wish they would have just done it better. I don't think that the the direction or the idea that they had was fundamentally flawed. I just think they just didn't do it well, and so it just comes off as like a poor attempt. Yeah, um, I agree. Because I'm not saying that you can't have an adult Scooby Doo show. I just know how one would do it, and it's not this. So, um, I don't know. I mean, outside of that, I don't really have much to say on it because I haven't finished it. So. I will I will finish it soon and I will rediscuss. But as of right now, I am not feeling Velma. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, well, the next thing that we wanted to talk about was um, well, I wanted to give a shout out to One Piece. Uh, One Piece finally made a game that people all collectively are enjoying. It is an RPG. Uh, and it recently came out. When did it come out? Like January. Oh, the game is out. No, it's yeah, the demo. Yeah, the, the game came out on the tenth, actually, I believe. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, it came out on the tenth. Um, the demo I played that. Um, and I haven't. No, it came out on the thirteenth. Sorry, uh, I played the demo and everything. Uh, it was cool. The tenth is a demo. Um, but I didn't. F- I didn't finish it all the way. I think I got to like the boss or when they got their powers took it something like that one of those um but the uh, one piece odyssey is an rpg i found it um i guess they said it um you really don't fight any hard characters because you're kind of overpowered until you lose your powers because you gotta they obviously gotta set you back to zero so you can grind um but once that occurs a lot of the they did a lot of you know cool um they would pay attention to the details when it came to people's fights, people's moves, special moves, um, some of the character designs that your enemies that you're fighting, um, the actual characters themselves, um, the voice acting, or at least the portrayal of the characters in the story were decent and that people were really enjoying it. So um, at least a lot of the a lot of the content creators I'll follow, plus um, the people that actually review games most of the time it was getting like sevens or eights out of ten which kind of tells me that it's subjective because most of the time once you get past that seven threshold um you could probably consider it a 10 out of 10 or someone could not really um it's really about what they perceive it to be and what they think was some of the worst parts about it and most people were just saying that it was too easy um but yeah, um, I'm kind of happy about it. I want to try it now. Um, I want to see if, if it's actually fun. It's kind of in that same cloth as Kakarot, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I remember when Jalen was here, we kind of looked it up and see what was what was um, what was the review scores for Kakarot, and it was both seven out of tens. Enjoy, uh, Jalen actually enjoyed that game, which still don't know why, but 
probably gonna be the same reason I like the Odyssey. Um, so attention to detail. You said what? I cried. That's a good goddamn game. <laughs> <laughs> Not just when I had a spot for the show. For the show. I was a little annoyed when that game was going to be free. But we're not talking about this. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm just proud that they found something. They did, they did it. And uh, overall, it was it's a, it's a good time. So, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that at least they kind of was able to make something that was worth in playing. And want to just... Quickly shout that out and say, hey, try out the One Piece demo if you have some time. It's One Piece Odyssey. Uh, and um, if you like it, you know, think about purchasing it. I know right now, through a few um, third-party Steam places, they got it for like 43 bucks. I'm waiting for it. I was going to wait for it to drop a little more, but I'm not going to play it on my PC. So I'm probably going to just go out and buy it on the Xbox. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I want to play it. I think I'm going to be interested. And once I finish Need for Speed Unbound, that might be the my ticket to Odyssey. So yeah, quite um, happy for it. Because especially when it's been like a huge drought of just good, decent games from any type of Bandai Namco. Um, so yeah, they, 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 they did something good there. Uh, but moving on, Ubisoft, you be nasty. Um, so they had to cancel a lot of stuff per usual. Um, and they delay some stuff per usual. Um, tell us about some, tell me about that Ubisoft, Josh, what you, what you, what you found out. Cancel. Um, yeah, it, I guess, uh, for a while, Ubisoft's been spending a lot of money on, they're big franchises and they've been saying like they in order to like make a profit they gotta continue to sell more and more copies whatever or sell more microtransactions Mm -hmm. um but yeah that's why you see far cry every you know is every two years uh far cry assassin's creed you know and they keep giving them long dlc um seasons like i think valhalla has had like a like a two year, two year um, for show, sure. yeah, two year season because it came out in 2020 um, with um, what's the name? And they just recently launched some like last of the DLC, like not too long ago, so yeah. So they're trying to, I mean, it's good to support the game longer, but um, continuously make money off of each, each product. Um, but anyways, they have been making as much money as they wanted to, and so the their president has been saying, like. 2023 is going to be the year that a lot of our developers has to um i forget the exact phrasing um ign had the article but it was just like basically they gotta you know uh this is this year gonna make or break us um because there's been a lot of talks of somebody trying to purchase ubisoft and they don't want to be purchased Mm -hmm. but i guess if they if they don't you know they're not making enough money they're gonna sell um, but anyways, uh, all, a lot of their upcoming games have been delayed and some projects have been canceled. Skull and Bones delayed again. Um, and that game wasn't already in the good space, so it, it's probably better to delay it. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. They, a couple months ago, right? They announced like five or six Assassin's Creed games. Um, and I don't know. I think the problem is that and they're trying to chase like bigger and bigger but they keep making more and more expensive games and i understand as triple a studio games are getting more expensive uh, but they need to figure out a different way to support that um rather than just like keep making bigger games because obviously they can't reach those sales reliably so it's it's kind of dumb to keep doing that um it's it's just wasting money and they have the Avatar game coming out, and it's like, mm-hmm. hopefully people buy it. Otherwise, you wasted hundreds of millions on that. Yes, you um, did. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, they've yeah, been they're, off the mark, bro. They've been off the mark. I know they were. I don't know, like, for example, people like Prince of Persia. Just yep. make a simple ass single player, <laughs> non open world. Prince of Persia game, and I guarantee you it will sell as much as Assassin's Creed that you spent 
all this extra money on making it like expand the whole world. They Bro. feel like they got this. They got their. They got this whole idea that they need to microtransaction you down or have these worlds be super expensive. When in reality, I don't care for any of it. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh my God! After they did Origins, they could have never done that again, and I would have been satisfied. Like, um, I did not care for Odyssey, and I did not care for Valhalla. I'm not saying Odyssey was a bad game, but it was more of the same, but in Greece. And Valhalla is more of the same, but in England. And I'm just like, I'm over this. I don't want to play this game no more. Like, this is not fun to me anymore. It's not fun to run around an open world world that doesn't have anything to do with it. I'm not enjoying myself. I'm not enjoying this grind of a grind fest that you guys think is fun. This RPG reflecting... Like, say, for instance, you played every freaking tale of Arise or something like that. Like, any every tale's game. Like, bro, I'm I'm over this concept. Do something different. They just don't get that yet. So this is what happens when you just kind of use the same formula, think somebody's going to keep buying and buying. And, and as you can tell, they spend millions and millions of dollars on these stupid games to be developed for them to come out and have poor sales. And they try to milk the people that love them. Unfortunately, hey. this is not how that works. Yeah, they they definitely not doing a good job. Like I fell off of Ubisoft, and I felt like it literally got to a point where I felt like their games was just like I don't want to say they're rescans, but um, they essentially felt like I was playing a, a different, a, the same game in like a different uh, like context, world, genre Setting, type thing. Yeah. Like I like the viewpoints they expand the map. I'm like I've seen that in a couple games. The weak skill trees boost my health by eight percent. I'd have seen that in a couple of games. Like it just was like it, it 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 wasn't no reason why I need to go play another Ubisoft game. And then don't even get me started on the glitches and stuff that started happening in them games. I'm like, hey, I'm going crazy with these glitches. I don't think I can play this no more, bro. Like so, yeah. um, like they driving. follow the same I'm just like, bro. Yeah, even like, their, even their driving game and their sports like games, games, they they follow the same template, which is they like Deontay mentioned. They want you to buy, they want you to play the game long time. The the yep. story gonna be sixty hours. We are gonna have uh, a million DLC chapters that's gonna keep you playing for a whole year or two, so that you are gonna keep buying my transactions and you are gonna keep playing my game. And for multiplayer games, like y'all know the the games that we play every day is not Assassin's Creed because mm-hmm. the games we play are free. They're multiplayer. And you ain't got to spend money on it to to see the content or whatever. And it's like, I don't, I don't care how good the next Assassin's Creed is, I'm going to beat it and then move on. So yeah. focus all that time and effort on trying to get me to stay an extra week or two on something else that's going to save you money or something like that. Like, yeah, j- just I, focus I, on what you're supposed to focus on is as making a great story. Like God of War is going to still outpace Assassin's Creed Valhalla in in probably profit simply based off of them expanding the world and leaving us alone after. Like, don't cause, don't make me go back to your game for no reason because you want to add in extra content, especially when the content isn't meaningful. So that is what really pisses me off about their their concept, their their abilities, and their thought process behind all of these games is that Watch Dogs Legion, I like for real. I I tried to get through the story. I almost made it, but at a point I felt like I was just doing very the samey ass samey missions that just wasn't interesting. Like they mm-hmm. they do have their off-brand companies that do fun things like immortal phoenix rising and then you have like writers republic but then at the same time you're constantly putting out the same things over and over that everybody knows just it's not fun so i don't know i mean they, they did rainbow six extraction and i felt and that was that one that, was good yeah it, it was short it was to the point and mm-hmm. we, we enjoyed it and moved on <laughs> uh that's yeah. is really all you gotta do. Yeah, I just I just I just see myself and I see them trying to convince us to play their games. And I think I think now that they understand Assassin's Creed Mirage is probably not gonna be like that. Um 
But I think it's just been so long that it's been that way that anything that they try to do now is going to just be questioned. So, like, I'm trying to go through all their, like, games that they've released. And none of these mugs stick out to me. Like, none of them. Um, Hyperscape. Ooh-wee, man. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of nonsense, a lot of, a lot of noise. So I don't know. A bunch of time fancy, a bunch of Assassin's Creed. Um, uh, I don't know. And it's not like they, like Ubisoft has like thousands of employees. It's not like they can't just get people to make other games like Splinter Cell, um, uh, Beyond Good and Evil, Prince of Persia. They got a, a, probably a bunch of IPs that they have, but they keep coming out with the same four every year. Yeah. Bro. That literally for honor and Rainbow Six is the same game. You know, one use swords and stuff, and one use guns. For Honor was a, a good idea. Um, even if we, we fell off of it. But I mean it, it was cool. It, it was cool for what it was. I I bought it. I literally bought that game. Yeah, but at this point, we should see, I mean, I guess they don't have to make a sequel, but, like, if they wanted to come out with another For Honor, it shouldn't be a game that you buy. It should be free to play, play the game, and, you know, maybe that will be your hit. But it's like, now they're chasing Battle Royale, now they're doing all this other stuff with, uh, what, uh, the, the Tom Clancy X Defiant, like, uh, first person shooter thing that nobody's gonna play. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so let me, let me ask y'all this: Ubisoft put out all these DLCs and stuff like that. How do y'all feel about DLC? Like, is it like well, what do y'all? Yeah, how, how do y'all feel about DLC? Just like real briefly. So I, for single player games, I don't buy DLC. Uh, like cosmetics, like they. All the games, they got a bunch of different armor, a bunch of different weapons, stuff like that. I don't buy none of that stuff. Um, and the expansions, if they're interesting enough, I'll pick up the game once all the expansions are out. Because, uh, like, I, I play Assassin's Creed Odyssey expansions, and they're I enjoyed them. They're really good. But I bought the game, it was $7, and it included everything versus $120 to buy everything separately, you know. Okay. What about you? And, that, and that's if it's worth it, because like, I mean, that's if if it seems good. Because Valhalla has had two years of DLC. Even if they come out with the, like an addition with everything, I'm not gonna buy it because I'm not that interested in the game. So it's kind of wasted. Gotcha. Um, well, I don't necessarily spend all my monies, or at least I don't try to buy them immediately. Is that is that is that what you asked, Shaylin? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, how do you? I guess just in general, like, how you feel about like DLC, and I guess kind of since we talking about Ubisoft, like their release methods with their DLC, I guess. Because like, I guess just insight, like, what I'm thinking of, like, okay, Ubisoft, they come out with they stuff, they come out with a gold edition of the game or deluxe edition, whatever you want to call it, because that was the ongoing trend, like at least around like 2016, and I don't, I. I feel like they think that the DLC is going to keep me into the game, but at least with my, you know, efficient, frugal, cheap state mindset, um, mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. okay. but I'm like, I'm not going to pay more money because like y'all almost have this stuff planned where y'all literally put a behind a paywall and I'm not going to consciously come back and spend 20, 30, $40 to come play some more content on this game a couple months down the line or whatever. And I think it's a flawed tactic, at least from my standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to draw me back into the game because once I put the game down, it's harder to come back to the game because first off, like you said, with Fire Emblem and stuff, you kind of got to come back and learn some things about the game, right? Um, hold on just a second. Uh, yeah. You got you to come back and learn a couple of things or whatever. Um, and then it's just kind of like, it's it's almost like an afterthought, I guess. It don't feel like it's super cohesive. And mm-hmm. then you need to like go in and find a DLC or go talk, you know, whatever, whatever, like go find his item or go talk to this person. The world changed like th- those sorts of things. It don't really pull me back into the game. And I just don't think it's like an, an effective method versus if they did something like what a lot of other people are doing at this point. 
make a free to play game and kind of just keep adding on to the game as you play like play it or like the, like the multiplayer or something like that because it's a lot more cohesive things don't change as much versus um i mean things change a little bit more but you already submerged within a game versus you know you pay some money you go play this game you beat this game and stuff and now you're trying to figure out what to do with it and they buy all right well we added some story like five hours worth of story it's just i don't know it just don't add up i guess in my head. yeah and then you start it depends on the, the last game. part if the yeah, like if the game yeah. thirty hours, right, and you pay sixty dollars for it, you charge me twenty, thirty dollars for some BLC and it's only gonna add five hours and y'all got rescanned enemies and you know those sorts of things, like it ain't that in like you ain't invested as much. You can't use it against other people, you can't show it off against other people. You fight some new enemies, they got some new weapons and stuff in the DLC, but half the time they'd be rescanned. It it just feels real afterthoughty if that makes sense, and it just don't yeah. feel super cohesive. Is- and I think that it's a it's um it's levels to good DLC. Like like you said, it's a bunch of stuff that's like five hours. You go do some extra stuff, and it's not worth it. Um, but also a game like The Witcher Three has two DLC expansions, and each one is like twenty twenty five hours five hours long. You're in a completely brand new area, new characters, new weapon, new story. Like and it feels like a different game or a different like whole chapter of the game that could have been in the original. Mm-hmm. So it's the same quality as the main game or even better in some cases. Whereas like a lot of DLC feels like, for example, the Assassin's Creed one, where I still enjoy the um like the Atlantis DLC uh because you can do different stuff. You have magic powers and stuff like that. So it was interesting because it was different from the main game. But a lot of that stuff is still you can tell it's lower quality, like less cutscenes or like more recycled like content or stuff like that. So it feels like an afterthought um, for a lot, especially Ubisoft. I feel like a lot of their DLC is just lower quality than the main game, and like nobody really wants that. Yeah, but what you gonna say, De- Deontay, Mister Mister? Yeah, my bad. All the DLC. No, nah, I ain't never bought no DLC from um for Assassin's Creed. Um if yeah. anything it's like the deluxe edition if I if I get it on sale, but mm-hmm. I've never beaten any DLC. I never played any DLC from a Ubisoft game. Um and mo- I think the only time I ever bought a big thing with a lot of DLC was when I bought the the Division 2 like after it came out and it was like the first big DLC. I decided to buy it and never played it. So I learned my lesson about buying DLC for those types of games, especially if I didn't enjoy the first part of it. I just don't because it, no matter how interesting it may look, it's always like luster to me. Um, so no, I don't buy DLC, not for those types of games for sure. For sure. Uh, like I'm going to buy the horizon forbidden West DLC because I truly enjoyed horizon forbidden West. Um, but there's nothing that will, get me to kind of buy anything that that especially if I didn't enjoy it or at least thought it was lackluster in the beginning um they did have had some very unique stuff in the in on uh, the past but um just no <laughs> just no uh but overall I think their process and their thought process behind you know their 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 DLC and how they want to present it it's flawed, very, very much so. It's like flawed, and I don't really know how to. Um, I don't, I, I don't think they know how to get out of this this situation that they kind of put themselves in. Like Ubisoft was not always like this. Um, they put themselves in that situation once they realized how Rainbow Six kind of over time came back, and then they started doing everything like that, and. Um, and it even even flew over into their single player stuff. So it's just the way of the patch now. They think that's the best way to go. And it truly ain't. Um, like I said, the games that I praise now are like um the Phoenix Rising, um, Immortals game, because it did not need a patch. It was fun to play. The open world felt unique and interesting to kind of go through, and it didn't feel too expansive to the point where you just like, why am I running around in this thing? Um, you had unique things to go. They obviously had their type of humor attached to it, but overall it felt interesting. So 
I mean, that's all. I mean, that's all I got to say. I don't, I don't really have any um, other thoughts on Ubisoft outside of they probably are going to be still in a situation where they're going to have to either they're going to be thinking about selling and um, because honestly, they just need new management. This isn't the way to, to kind of go. I think the I think it's a little too late. Um, it, Mirage might come out. It might be a huge success. Because people are ready to go back to that non-open world situation, more assassin, more fun, more interesting, and people are ready to go to India. I think that's where it's at, India. Um, so those types of things, and then feudal Japan is a really strong selling point. But I think those things are a little too late. Those should have been the games that came out after Odyssey, in my opinion. I think Valhalla just been it's, it's overstayed. It's welcome that whole source material, that open world garbage. That's kind of overstayed. It's welcome, and they're filling it. So we'll see. We will see. But yeah, I think that's um, all that I want to talk about outside of um, uh, Overwatch Two rumors. Because I don't think we're gonna talk about Ant Man. I mean, we could probably squeeze it in too, but the Overwatch rumors was um, Overwatch Two. What are we thinking? Um, they got some. Um, they talking about. I think you said Josh that they were going to potentially have a um, healer come out, and they were going to try to amp up the rewards for us um, common folks that uh, only have so much money to spend on a battle pass. We don't want to buy their special, special stuff. So they're trying to give common folks, people, uh, some more rewards to run after and not just challenges to do. Do you got the yeah, battle pass, Jalen? No. <laughs> Man, ain't that the game you play the most and you still ain't got the battle pass? Jeez Louise. Man, I only He's play one character, bro. Oh my goodness. You hear this, man? Yeah, I, you want me to, to be fair, ain't nothing in the battle pass for Ash, and he he should have got it the last one because it had that uh, emote. I mean, not uh, that intro sick. that he. Man, but, yeah. sick. <laughs> but I wasn't playing it like that either because they had a aim assist and stuff for real, for real. But I mean, like I said, I already skimmed through the battle pass. Ain't nothing. Maybe if I complete it, I might get it. I don't really you know. I was contemplating and stuff like that, but I just don't feel like after it been put. I feel like I'm condoning today antics by buying a battle pass, especially when they snatch out of loot boxes and stuff from Overwatch. I feel like they can have both of them, but yeah, just have some battle pass exclusive things in there and just, you know what I mean? After that season over, then put in a loot box and stuff. Now I don't have access to that item because it's not in the battle pass. Like, that's stupid. Yeah. Like, come on, guys. That's stupid. Because <laughs> the, the main thing is that, like, I think the loot boxes were bad in Overwatch mm-hmm. 1 uh, for a while. Eventually, they did, like, patch it and, like, remove duplicates, and you can, like, get more money and stuff like that, so it was a lot easier. But the main thing is that the loot uh, the loot boxes were a free reward. Like, every week, you win nine matches, it gives you, um, you know, a loot box, and the loot box can give you anything. Or when they have, like, those Halloween or winter events, you're incentivized to play it because it's, like, Oh, if you play this Halloween mode, we'll give you a couple loot boxes and you can get some of the new Halloween cosmetics. Uh, that at least made it interesting. But now, you know, they're about to come out with the Chinese New Year uh, event. And I'm not going to buy, like, I'm not going to spend money on any of those Chinese New Year skins. Uh, you're not going to give me anything interesting from the event. So I'm just not going to play the, the special event mode. And it's kind of like a waste of time. And like the current one, the current event, which was the Greek one, uh, they are given like a a, a mercy scan for playing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you got to win one. You got to win a whole bunch of matches, which is, you, you know, dumb. And then two, the scan is Overwatch. It's Overwatch one skin that they're giving out. It's not even the new Widow scan or the Reinhardt skin or anything like that. They're giving out the old skin for playing their new event. So the rewards for, especially like free, free players, but I would say for everybody had suck because there are no rewards outside the battle pass. Um, so hopefully whatever they do, 
will uh, address that. But the only other thing I want to mention is that um, they have been giving out free stuff. Like when Ram Rada came out, uh, they gave out a free scan form that I've been using. But you have to watch Twitch to get it. So it's still like, it's not even playing the game. You got to watch Twitch to get the reward. And that's not interesting because I'm not, I don't actually care about watching these streamers. I just want the reward. So I'm just leaving it on in the background. Yep. I think um, bringing that stuff back into the actual game would be nice because again, I used to enjoy entering the loot box, seeing what I got reward. I understand that we had to pay $60 to get into that. But um, I still enjoyed it, and I know that Apex does a, a similar thing, so I don't know why that the Overwatch couldn't. Um, I'm pretty sure they still make a lot of money, um, but it just depends. I don't want them to obviously catch, copy everything that they do, but that would be a nice one just to have something to randomize and potentially earn. I'm not saying you're going to play with all the characters. I'm not saying you're going to do everything. I don't necessarily play with everyone. Um, I barely play tank, so it's just more so those things that you enjoy. I do like how they customize the shop to kind of sell stuff for you because you play with these characters sometimes and what you like. So I like all that stuff, part of it, but I just don't like the lack of feeling of accomplishment outside of I got the highlight and also they don't even show you badges of how much you did and what you how crazy you went, it's just kind of like it's over and done and done. You know you went crazy, but, you know, it's just that, yeah. you know, that that feeling of um, all of that should just be replaced with something. I mean, I understand not being toxic, but literally that game still has those people in there. I remember I was playing you by myself. At the, um, the upload thing at the end. Yeah, something. Like, you can uh, congratulate your teammates, but, like, it it was nice in the first game where it's like, you know, oh, Ash went off and should get, like, 10 upvotes. So, I mean, like, everybody in the game acknowledged, like, yeah, you did the best, even though you were on the other team, you did the best out of everybody in this game. Yeah. And I felt like that was a positive thing because it's like, you know, I don't see why that would have been a negative, but, like, overall, they got to do better to address player like accomplishment and feedback mm -hmm. yeah so it's just um a lot of those little things that they can fix and tweak but overall we're we're, we're happy with the game of course right i'm not saying that we aren't i think we are um quality of the matches most of the time um feel feel engaging sometimes they could be a little off but at least we're enjoying them to an extent. And I'm not saying that we're not, we're not, not, we're not, not, we're not winning as much as we used to, which it means that we are being moved up the pole of level of skilled player. I feel like anyway, because there is a time where we were just winning every match. Now we run into people every few and far, not, not few far in between that we actually have to compete with or they just strategize and maybe they're just people that are grouped up because they're not great, but they are more strategic, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that is kind of my thoughts on um, Overwatch as of now, which, you know, it's, it's, it's still good. Still good. Um, but Ant-Man and Quantumania... I'm a, I'm gonna keep it short and brief. I don't. I'm starting not to care, but I like the guy, so I want to watch it. But I'm truly like over the big franchise stuff now. Um, I don't know why, but I'm just losing a lot of interest. And I used to be big on Marvel. And I used to be big on like making sure I'm watching everything. I just feel like now I don't care about this whole new one. When it was being built and we had to see where, how, where it goes, it was fun. But now that it is built and then we had to expand on it, it's becoming less and less interesting. But I don't want to do that to Ant-Man because I actually like Paul Rudd. And I like, um, dang, why can't I remember his name? Black guy. I don't Jonathan know his name. Jonathan Majors? Yeah, Jonathan Majors. Really good actor. Really like loved him in, um, what's that What's that show that was on HBO? Lovecraft. Lovecraft Country. Loved him in that show. 
But um, yeah, uh, that's how I feel about it. I watched it and had no emotion. What What's your thoughts, Josh? Um, I mean, I yeah. When I was watching it, the main thing is that um, I still like the Marvel stuff, but the Marvel stuff is just the next chapter in their overall thing. I mm-hmm. I don't expect each movie to be like impactful in the sense where it's like you watch. I don't know what's a good movie. Um, I I like uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier. Like I really like the movie the movie and mm-hmm. i would go back to watch it later whereas like I, a lot of these movies and tv shows i don't think they're meant to i don't know they know you can watch it to see where the story goes next but it's not like this individual movie is going to be like a movie that's going to be on your favorite movie all, all time list like, yeah and um, I, and these, like, unfortunately, uh-huh. I think that's kind of hurting it so I feel like the the yes. the the, 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 the um, idea that we always have in our head now that this is going to connect to everything else um and not just watch this movie for the movie is causing us to have low expectations for the movie or not care for the movie but high expectations for the tie-in and um it one it does one or two things for me. It, it the first thing it does is it just makes me not interested because I don't because all I'm going to care about is the last fifteen seconds or what they say to kind of progress the overarching story. And I don't really care what happened in the movie because I I there's like sixteen movies or fifteen or no nah, it's like it's like eight movies I've done watch now that I really didn't care about the story and I was just like. Okay, this is progressing this part and this is progressing this part. So I'm just tying it all together and literally I can watch that in a YouTube video and then go watch the big end game one or whatever it's called. So that is my disinterest. And it's and it's worrying me because that means that we might be coming to the end of the whole mega mega stuff. So um uh, yeah, and uh how to put it like yeah i think that's fine um in the sense that i don't think that even like the first few phases every movie was a hit a lot of those movies even though like pretty much all the thor movies before thor 3 sucked and like a lot of the iron man movies were not actually good like iron man 1 was good Mm -hmm. 2 and 3 were not um so i don't have the picture overall that each marvel movie is going to be like a um oscar worthy experience right um but as long as the character yeah i I would say i'm showing up for the characters so if the characters at least are doing interesting things i'll i'll feel like it was worthwhile to see uh see them in the movie but like if they're just like going through the motions i feel like um with that particular character then it's not going to be as interesting like Mm -hmm. for example shang chi i like that movie's uh, side characters like i liked uh, the the villain and stuff like that and it was interesting it was different than the other marvel movies because they were doing like dragon ball z stuff i'm not personally interested in the main character or the main actor so Mm -hmm. you know that might be like a a skip for the for me or some people but another movie if you love paul rudd then you're gonna show up and see paul rudd he's gonna do his thing and hopefully you know he doesn't die in this movie or something like that um but yeah it's just i'm at at that point where i'm not expecting anything from it uh but yeah i I can definitely see a lot of people uh getting tired of it hopefully in which it seems like the the creative people at marvel have a good idea of what they're what they want to do long term uh so hopefully they can recognize that and uh correct um you know the stuff that people don't like i don't think the cinematic stuff has to last forever i think at some point they're going to want to go back to individual stories like when they bring out like the x-men and and stuff like that because at this Mm -hmm. point they're they have so many characters that you can't like keep doing crossover movies to tell like a big uh you know Thanos is coming and, and stuff like that you can't keep doing that forever 
Uh, they're gonna have to go back to individual stories at some point. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that everything has been um, bad. I'm just saying that um, I'm 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 more so surprised that the story was good than um, than anything when I go see him because I'm not expecting him to be good. So, um, but yeah, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get the fanboys off me and say, I love, I love, love, love the overarching story. So, um, yeah. looking forward to that though. So I will yeah. say about Ant-Man really quick that like you're saying, Jonathan Majors and, um, uh, seems interesting. He, he was good in Loki. He's yeah. been good in his other shows and he's supposed to be around, uh, for a while in the Marvel movies. Um, so I just hope that, um, cause you know, he's supposed to be the next Thanos, uh, but since there are different versions of him, I hope that they don't, um, make people tired of him too quickly. Like, Oh, he has to be a threat, but still he can't win everything right away. So it's, it's like, you know, Maybe he dies in Ant Man, but comes back later, or he doesn't die in Ant Man. But like, how 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 are you going to make people going to movies care about seeing somebody come back seven times? You know. <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, I think they got attached him to a great uh, actor, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the that's the, that is the show. I want to thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you as always. If you got to this part of the show, you're the real OG. And I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to our podcast, the House of Wolf podcast, um, all over the place, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you. Appreciate you as always. Anything you guys want to say for the people before we get up out of here today? Uh, what's the best um, video game? TV show or movie? Video best video game, TV show or movie? Or are you talking about like best like video game? Uh, like Sonic, uh, Mario, <sighs> Halo. <laughs> I mean, it's fresh in my mind, but I don't think so. Um, I I would still, I still would go with season one Witcher. I like that a lot. So. I ain't gonna uh, say season two, but season one, which was really good. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um, but no, still gotta give it to Mortal Kombat. Six. <laughs> oh man, Mortal Not... Kombat story is dumb, and that movie is dumb, and that's perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. Uh huh. Um, yeah, but uh, they didn't to say Sonic. Jay or, didn't watch. Jay I didn't guess watch did, did did either of y'all watch Detective Pikachu? I thought, oh, I like thought it was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, I didn't see it, but but yeah, I didn't watch Sonic. Huh? I didn't even watch Sonic. I kept saying I'm gonna do it, and I ain't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's all I got. All right, good people. Well, thank you again. Thank y'all. For listening, I appreciate it, and we will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.